AV Linux MX Edition. AV Linux is a versatile Debian-based distribution featuring a large collection of audio and video production software. Additionally, it also includes a custom kernel with IRQ threading enabled for low latency audio performance. It can be run from a USB, a DVD, or you can install it directly on your system. It's based on stable Debian, and that's what we'll be taking a look at today on eBuzz Central. Just to let you know, today's video is sponsored by the eBuzz Central store. If you haven't been over there yet, zip on over and check it out. We have everything from t-shirts to hoodies, sweatshirts, tank tops, long sleeve tees, phone cases, stickers. We've got mugs, water bottles, steel tumblers, and we have a couple new additions. We have now got Ubuntu-based items on the shop, along with our Debian and Arch. We have Kali. We have Linux Mint now. And as of yesterday, we have now added Manjaro. So zip on over, support the channel, check it out. And also, if there's something that isn't on the store that you would like to see, drop a comment below and let us know. Now back over to AV Linux's website. And we are on AV Linux's website. It's bandshed.net slash AV Linux. I'll be sure to include that link in the description below. And as you can see right here, it says AV Linux MX Edition. And it goes over a little bit of information about the distribution. It's been around since 2008, so over 14 years. It's on the Licorix kernel, which is customized for low audio latency. It comes with the open box window manager and the XFCE for desktop environment. And, of course, it's got the MX tools, which we will go over here in a second. But it's got a lot of information right here. It lets you know where you can download it. It's even got a user's manual right here. If you click on that, it'll bring up the PDF for the manual. And it's a very integrated and informational manual. So, should you have any problems or need information, you can come over to this manual and get it answered, okay? What we're going to do right now is zip on over to the AV Linux desktop. And if you download AV Linux, throw it on a USB or open it up in a virtual machine, this is the screen you're going to be met with. Right off the bat, you get a welcome screen, and it just basically lets you know that it's a multimedia content creation focused distribution. It lets you know some of the base information that is right there on their website, that it is open box window manager with the XFCE for desktop environment. It's got the MX tools, and it says take your time to look around. It says right here, don't show again, install that hard disk drive. Read the manual or close it. We're going to go ahead and close it. And as you can tell right off the bat, you've got this beautiful conky, beautiful background in this great looking dock down bottom. This is a really aesthetically pleasing distribution. It looks good and it's lightweight. Now, if you go up here to the conky, you're going to show that you're using a little bit more RAM than you are because we are in a virtual box. And I'm going to show you that here real quick. We're going to go ahead and pull up the terminal. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and run top real quick. And we run it, and as you can see right now, let me make this a little bigger so you can see it, and we can keep the conky open. We've got three gigabytes of RAM issued to this virtual machine. At present, just to run the operating system, you're at 390 megabytes. That's under 400 megabytes used at rest. That is truly lightweight. So if you're looking for something that you can put on a newer computer and it fly, this is definitely it. And if you have older hardware that you're wanting to keep around a little longer, AV Linux is definitely something to take a look at to put on it. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of the terminal. And other things covered over here in the Conky. You've got your volume right here. So if you volume up, it'll show you right here. Swap partition if you have it. Wi-Fi, wired connection, disks, temperature of your PC, uptime, and then, of course, the kernel. Now, this does have the kernel 5.15.0-10.1, which is the Licorix kernel. That's the one that's got the lower audio latency injected into the kernel. So that way you're going to be able to do the things that you want to do and not have it bog your system down or get poor quality audio. Now, if you right click on the home screen, you've got the installer right here. You do have Firefox and there is files. So let's go ahead and open up files. And as you can see, it's the Thunar file manager. You've got your usual suspects over here on the left. You've got your home folders right here. And this just keeps getting better and better. I love the look of this operating system, guys. If you're not into the completely dark or the completely light look and you want something that's kind of in between but is aesthetically pleasing to look at, this is definitely it. So Thunar file manager is lightweight, it's fast, but it's still comprehensive enough for you to get the things done that you need to get done. You also have five 
allow edit view go and help up here. Let's see what version of Thunar this is. It is 4.16.8, so it's the newest version. So that's pretty impressive. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. Go ahead and go back up here and right click again. You've got your wallpapers right here. Let's open that up. And once they open up and populate, you can tell right here you've got a decent collection of wallpapers. I really like the one it comes with out of the box, so I don't believe I'm going to change that. But as you can see, you've got a lot of beautiful wallpapers to go through down here. You can do zoomed in. You can do full screen. You can do preferences right here. You can change that up. Let's look at preferences. You can change that to an icon if you would want to. Click OK, and then it will give you an icon look right here. Or you could go back to the way we had it as a list. And then you could have names ascending, descending. You can change that around if you want to. And then right here, it shows you your directory. Now, you can add a directory right here. So let's say you've got a folder of wallpapers that you like. Just put them somewhere on your system. Go down here and click Add. Go over and pick that folder out and select it. And it would be put right here. So you have easy access and an easy way to change your wallpaper folder if you would like to. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that, and we'll go ahead and close back out of that. Now, if you come back up top, there's terminal and then root terminal. We've already looked at those. We're going to go ahead and open up software. And if you do download this, the password is demo. Go ahead and authenticate that. This is the MX package installer. This right here is probably one of the tools I enjoy most about MX and AV MX Linux is that you can come over here. Let's say we're on audio. You click on audio and you've got all these listed right here. Let's say you wanted to install some of those. You could go ahead and click that and that. Go ahead and minimize it down. Then you could go to browser. If you wanted to get a different browser than Firefox, you could say Waterfox and Chromium. Go ahead and click out of that. Then you've got different desktop environments, development, docs, email. How are you going to handle your email? Well, I want to use Thunderbird. So you click on that. Then you come down to file managers. Maybe you don't want Thunar. Maybe you want something like Nemo. You can go ahead and click on that. And then you just basically come down here, pick the applications that you want to install. And once you have all of those selected, you just come down here, click on install, and it will install them for you. All in one fail swoop. You don't have to go into Synaptic or you don't have to go into a software center and find them one at a time. You can go through here, select them all at once, and install them all at once. Love this tool. If you do download it, take a look at this tool. I'm sure you'll love it. And then over here, you've got your stable repos. And it's downloading the package info. And this lets you know what all software you have installed from the stable repos. And then if you go to the MX test repo, it'll show you everything that's available inside the MX test repo. So if you've got something that you can't find in the stable and you see it in the test repo, you can download it and install it from there. Then, of course, you do have the Debian backports. And there's all your Debian backport applications. You do have flat packs as well. Put in your demo password, and it'll take a moment to download the package info. And once that's downloaded, here's a list of all the flat packs that you have available. Now, let's say you're looking for a specific application and you don't want to have to scroll through everything. Just come up into search. Let's do a search for like Caden Live. There's Caden Live. It's right there in a flat pack. You can come over here and check it to install. Come down here and upgrade it because it seems to be already installed. So that's pretty much it on the MX package installer. This is definitely a tool that I do love. If you do decide to take a look at this distribution, be sure to take a look at that. Let's go ahead and close out of that. Now we right click back up here. You've got MX tools. Let's go ahead and open that up. And this, guys, I love it. This is a specific set of tools that come with MX Linux that are included in AB Linux because it is based on MX. You've got your live USB kernel updater. You got your live USB maker, remaster CC, and snapshot. Okay, let's go ahead and open up snapshot. I recommend once you have your system completely set up the way you want, all the applications that you want, all your wallpaper set where they want, once you've got it to where you're not doing any more tinkering with it, this is where you come. You'll want to come down here and name your snapshot, then click next. You can also exclude certain directories by ticking the common choices below. If you don't want your documents or music or networks, anything in here not included in your snapshot, you could always come over here and check it. Then you could click next. And it says snapshot has all the information it needs to create an ISO from the running system. Okay, it will take some time to finish depending on the size of the installed system and the capacity of your computer. 
You can click OK at that point if you want to, and it will save an ISO snapshot of your system, or you can save it and burn it to a USB and hand it to a buddy and say, here's my operating system, take a look at it. It's really nice. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel that, and we're going to close out of that. If you come back over, you've got CH Root Rescue, Disk Manager, Boot Options, Boot Repair, Cleanup. These tools right here are one of the reasons MX Linux is one of the most popular distributions today. And I think it's one of the reasons that AV Linux based this distribution on it. You've got date and time, Conky, NVIDIA driver installer. Okay, if you click on that and you do have NVIDIA, all you have to do is come over here. It'll say no NVIDIA card found. What it will do is if you're using this on bare metal, it'll tell you what NVIDIA card you have. Then you press enter here and it will go download the proper driver for that NVIDIA card. So let's go ahead and close out of that. You've got fixed GPG keys, package installer, repo manager, system info, format USB, and iDevice mounter. This is another application that you need to take a look at, okay? I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. If you come down here, you've got accessories. You've got everything from application finder, Conky manager, Thunar file manager, development, icon browser, graphics. You've got GIMP installed out of the box, Inkscapes installed out of the box, multimedia. Now, I'm not going to list all of these, but if you're looking right now, you can see you have everything from Alsa Mixer, Handbrake, Hydrogen, Caden Live, OBS, Simple Screen Recorder. You have a ton of different multimedia options here. Then we can go to Network. You've got FileZilla, Firefox, Mail Reader, Transmission, Web Browser, Office, QPDF View, and then your Settings. You've got Appearance. Let's go ahead and open up Appearance. And this is where you'd want to come if you wanted to change the look of your system. Okay, right now we're on the AVL MXE Die Hard. I'm going to leave it there. But you can download or install different styles in here if you would choose to. Icons, we're on the AVL MXE Die Hard icons. I'll leave that. But this is where you would come to change your icons. Fonts, this is where you would come to adjust your icons, including any anti-aliasing or custom DPI settings that you wanted to use. And then, of course, base settings for the system. I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. Let's open back up over here. Then you've got your package settings for AV Linux, system editor, utilities, wine staging setup, default applications, settings manager, synaptic package manager. Let's go ahead and open that up. Along with MX's way of installing programs, you can always go straight with Synaptic Package Manager if you would like. Okay, now that it's maximized, as you can see, you've got a category view over here. You've got everything from amateur radio all the way down to utilities and video software. You can click on video software, scroll through here, find what you like, or you could always go up here and do a search. Let's do a search for OBS. And there's OBS Studio. It's already installed, and the plugins are installed. Let's see if they have Shotcut. There is Shotcut. If you wanted to install Shotcut Video Editor, all you would have to do is come over here and check. Mark it for installation. Then it will give you a list of dependencies that are required for Shotcut to work. Go ahead and mark all of those. Once those are all marked and are ready, you can click Apply, and it will install it. Synaptic Package Manager. I'm used to it more than any other package manager around because it was the first thing I used 14 years ago when I switched to Linux. If you do download AV Linux, zip on over and check out Synaptic Package Manager. I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. Quit. Right click again. We'll come back down to system. You've got bash config, bleach bit, conky toggle, disk manager, gparted, MX date and time, MX package installer, which we already looked at. Then you have wine. Browse C drive, configure wine, uninstall wine software. Your open box settings are right here. You can edit the menu schema, can reconfigure open box or refresh cache, and then you can log out if you want to. You can also get your applications from right here on the dock. Just click on it, and there's all your applications. It gives you bigger icons to look at. So if you're like me and you wear glasses and you need things a little bigger, you may want to just zip down to the dock. Then you have Firefox, Thunar, MX package installer right here, your terminal, volume, internet. If there are available updates, if you click on the updates, it'll let you know that you'd be doing a full upgrade, three upgraded, which is some libraries, it looks like, NVIDIA Detect, library, and library. And it's going to be 71.7 kilobytes of disk space. I'm not going to do that because I'm in a virtual box, so I will go ahead and close out of that. And that is a quick look at the newest release of AV Linux. Great distribution, great operating system, light on your resources, 
It is definitely something that if you're into creating, whether you be using GIMP, whether you be doing videos or audios or anything like that, heck, even if you just want a daily driver that you can use, this is definitely an operating system to take a look at. Zip on over, check out the eBuzz Central store. Like I said, if there's something that you want that's not on the store, drop it in the comments below. Do me a favor before you leave today. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we are producing, you can support us by becoming a member to the channel, buying us a cup of coffee, or better yet, becoming a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links will be below. Thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.